Dr. Rupa Hark. Mr. Yeah. Speaker, 77 days to go and breaking up is hard to do. Disentangling ourselves from 45 years of arrangements that touch every aspect of our lives. Um, this is bigger than any piece of legislation, any budget, anything that any of us have ever voted on. It's a big deal. It's existential stuff here. I'm not going to be voting for this deal, because for me it's the culmination of a string of calamities. I had 373 emails in one day this week asking me to oppose it. People can't understand why we had a referendum at all. And then the triggering of Article 50 with no plan, holding a general election within that time frame. That didn't work out very well, did it? And then the abandoned vote of last year, adding another 30 days of wasted time. Now before us, we have this bastardised compromise that's united a whole pile-up of, of departed ex-ministers, every living Prime Minister there is, the ideological purists of the ERG, and every single one of us here today on this side. Never mind the backstop. My constituents, 13,000 outraged EU nationals among them, are worried about their financial passporting rights or their carbon credits when the EU emissions trading scheme ends. And we're now told not to make the perfect the enemy of the good. It's a mighty big downgrade from the easiest deal in history, isn't it? It's a bit of a downgrade from they need us more than we need them. But there's plenty of material there for any student essay on can a minority government ever behave like an autocracy? Desperate measures from number 10. These evenings of drinky poos for Tory MPs, knighthoods for some of them, even a meeting offered to the 218 all-party MPs imploring the PM to do, rule out a catastrophic no-deal Brexit, effectively jumping out of a plane with no parachute without even a safe landing space, and I ended up at that one myself. That's one in three of us, Mr Speaker, who are concerned about just-in-time supply chains, rules of origin. Alas, nothing new came from the PM. The same old, um, same old. And there does come a time when being resolute becomes being pig-headed and stubborn. <coughs> Meanwhile, the farcical scenes of a multi-million pound ferry contract paid to a firm with no vessels, stockpiling drugs, we've become the biggest buyer of fridges. That's one thing we can revel in. Oh, yes. Yeah. Wait, does she not think it's farcical that the, uh, it was revealed that we've spent a million pounds on these fridges so far? I absolutely do agree with her. I mean, it's like all the money that this is racking up, never mind the £39 billion just to do the splits. Um, the the no-deal notices, one of them with the recommendation that Britain should vary their diets to avoid, potato, uh, to avoid sorry, bananas and tomatoes in future. 3,500 troops on standby. Our great nation has descended into a sort of dad's army style farce. And to just get on with it is easier said than done when everything, all the it that we should be getting on with is so interconnected. We saw 600 deaths, uh, Mr Speaker, last year from homelessness in the sixth richest country on earth, including one on our very doorstep here. We know from the UN Extreme Poverty Report, 14 million of our fellow citizens are in extreme poverty. Yeah. The NHS, which is hemorrhaging EU staff, where hoarding insulin is now a thing which never used to exist. And then even uh, the Home Secretary's gone now, but the, the desperate people washed up in dinghies on our shores underlines the need for international cooperation at a time when we are turning away from our neighbours. And we've heard also about the course and climate not of them and us, not only sort of them, the EU, and us in the other side, but also within this debate, the Leavers and the Remainers. As uh, the Honourable Member for Oxford and Abington pointed out, Brexit has cost us dear from the public purse. Two new departments, Brexit planning across the entire civil service, costly experiments, creating a dress rehearsal with motorways in Kent. Um, and as I say, that's even before we get to the £39 billion, which um, perplexes some people on that side. Every government analysis shows that this will contract our economy by up to 9%. The best deal, obviously, is the one that we have on off, that we want to have as existing members with a seat at the table rather than paying out to remain in line. We know that what was promised was always improbable. Now we know the deliverable of those outlandish uh, policies was undeliverable and the process was illegal. So, Mr Speaker, as D-Day looms, 
We need a plan B to break this logjam, impasse, gridlock, deadlock, cul-de-sac. And we must have that meaningful vote that's been so hard resisted by the government to reassert the sovereignty of Parliament. And I thank you, Mr Speaker, for your role in uh, sort of changing the relations between legislature and uh, executive, which you have done which we all thank you for, although, you know, nothing to do with them. They, they resisted every drop of that. So the last thing we need now is a blackmail Brexit with guns held to our heads as increasingly, by the end of last year, goodwill as well as time was in decreasing supply. And all this parliamentary game-playing, when the functioning of our country and people's lives and livelihoods are at stake. So given the magnitude of all this, it's time for calm action. We need a fresh assessment of the will of the people, because it's 2019 now, not the middle of 2016 when circumstances were so different. Trump hadn't even been elected then, and it feels like he's been there for 50 years already. So we extend Article 50, and given that there is only one deal on the table, we've heard, haven't we? Nous allons pas renégocier ce deal. They have said it to us in every language. So that one deal there is has to be put to the people, to the electorate, to endorse, if it's a good one, what are they scared of? So we need a people's vote with the option to remain, as we know what that looks like, um, and remain and reform, because we know it could be better. Now that is what I call taking back control. Uh, yeah. Thank you.